All right, y'all. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So uh, there's a few uh, warnings slash caveats uh, before I get started. First one is, um, as you saw earlier, I was heckling Nathan heavily. I, I expect equal heckling in return. Um, the second one is that I gave my slide deck to a friend of mine, Alex Matchnier, before, uh, before presenting. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're not quite sure what's going to come up. So uh, hopefully it's all good. Uh, it's all in uh, good fun, hopefully. Um, so we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. Slightly nervous about that, but it uh, should, be, should be good. Um, so the, uh, the idea here is uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how we take Ember, how we take the, the framework and conceptual stuff from uh, where, where we started, where, where we're coming from, and into uh, the future. So, but first, a little bit about myself. Um, I, uh, I, uh, I'm an Ember Core team member. Um, I have a severe open source problem, although I will say I'm recovering slightly. I have some blank spots on my uh, timeline now, so I am very proud of that. I do not suggest anyone go for crazy streaks. Um, interestingly, they took the total number of days in a streak down just a day before I hit 1,000. I, you know, just saying I may have broken the uh, GitHub UI, so they had to change it. Um, and, uh, and, and I work here at Twitch. Uh, it's really awesome to work with so many smart people. Uh, I've never quite been on a team with this uh, caliber of folks before. Uh, if you're interested in a job, we are definitely uh, looking for good people. Uh, any talk that I give, uh, if you've seen them before, I always talk a little bit about my family. Uh, these are my boys. Uh, they are now, they are seven and eight. Um, and uh, and I, I just couldn't do any of the stuff that I do without, without the support of my family and uh, them. And so I always like to throw them up on a slide. So I'm glad he did not add any mustaches or anything to, to the kids. All right. So, uh, so the first thing is, like, so how do we... Uh, how do we keep moving forward? How, do, how does the framework, like Ember has come from some really bad times. Uh, I, I started with Ember just before the 1.0. I'm sure many of you have, have been involved longer than me. That's, that's great. Um, we can trade war stories later. There's plenty of beer. Um, so like, so at Ember 1.0, we had all sorts of things, all sorts of concepts that uh, later turned out to be really horrible ideas, like really, really bad things. Um, uh, and I'm sure some of you are still dealing with some of these things. Uh, so we had like views, container view, where you could manually create view instances and like append them uh, completely on your own, uh, where you'd have the view helper, uh, which could potentially change the context um, uh, or whatever. Uh, and then proxy and controllers, uh, so your templates turned into essentially a nomad's land of not knowing what uh, curly curly foo actually points to is this a model property? Is this a uh, you know what is this a computer property on my controller? What is this thing? We had context shifting, making all of that even like ten times worse. Uh, so uh, so with context shifting, like you'd have an each, and then the each the block for the each would be like fifty lines long, of course, filling your editor, uh, and you have no idea where curly curly foo is coming from. Is it the uh, the iteration? Is it the the item you're iterating over? Is it um, is it your, your item controller? Is it a computed property on the actual controller? Uh, is it a route model uh, property? Like, what the hell is happening? Uh, literally nobody knows. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, and then testing, seriously. Who did testing? Anybody in 1.0? Like, really? Was that a thing? I tried really, really hard uh, to test uh, the first 1. Uh, like 1.0 app that I wrote and failed miserably, like really bad, like it was horrible. Um, and, uh, and I got really sad. Okay, so now today, uh, we've, come, we've come someplace, right? We, we've, we've gotten rid of some of the horrible baggage. Um, testing actually kind of works mostly, right? There's things that, are, that are need to be better, there's things that uh, we're trying to pro progress on, uh, but you can do it. Right? Like most people uh, today, like if you read Hacker News, I feel like I'm in like the Twilight Zone because like Hacker News is like, ah, if you want to test, you should use Ember. I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, so, you know, so this is great. Um, so, you know, you have, you have a bunch of different kinds of testing. We killed this context shifting thing because like bananas. 
Um, and, uh, and proxy controllers are basically dead. Uh, there were still some legacy add-ons you could use for a while to help you transition. Uh, but the idea is, is basically, if you look at a template, you know where things are coming from. Uh, you know if you see foo uh, in, in a thing and not model that foo, you know it's coming from the controller or the con component context, whichever the, the, this context is at that place. Um, the template land became much closer to, uh, you know, to basically a lexical scope, right? Like, like things that we can actually reason about um, and not troll ourselves. Um, so this is great. And now the, uh, the, tr the future, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, uh, uh, so, you know, the, where we're going, like basically we're, we're going to have, uh, you know, we've got an RFC open for the new uh, project layout, which is the module RFC. Um, it proposes a brand new way of laying out your project, uh, as well as additional packages or engines or add-ons and repo add-ons and stuff. Um, and, and learns from a lot of the things in the past. Uh, we've got the same sort of process in RFC coming from uh, the testing perspective to make, to like sort of bridge the gap between uh, acceptance testing and integration testing, unit testing, and making them all have a consistent API. Um, and uh, and we're, we've been focusing sh like a lot on the performance, the runtime performance, the individual rendering performance, the re-render performance, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and that's going to continue to uh, to move forward um, and to make it uh, more modular. As Nathan mentioned, uh, like where you can bring Amber as an add-on, you can have individual parts that are more swappable. Um, you can augment the core framework with additional things or remove things that you don't need, right? Like, you may not need some, like, uh, because Ember follows Ember, you may, we ship things uh, that, uh, that most apps probably don't use, like things that were possible in 2.x that uh, we have to keep around until 3.0, but you may not use them. So things like that where you'll be able to strip those sort of features out of your app, or out of the, the build of Ember that you're using, uh, and, and make your code even leaner, uh, tree shaking, all that kind of jazz. Um, so that's where we're going. So, uh, okay, hey boys. Um, so, so how the heck do we do that, right? Like that, that's the thing that we all care about, right? Like that's the thing that, uh, that's tricky. Um, we have to know uh, both where we've come from, uh, what, what we have today, what we have to support, what the APIs are, um, and how do we get, uh, well, and then where we want to go. Um, uh, like what's wrong with it, we have to identify those things, and then we need to figure out like what's the future, what, what do things look like? So how do we do that? So the first thing you have to do is uh, troll Yehuda a little bit, um, and you've got to figure out uh, what's wrong. What, what's wrong with the system? What, what do you have in the system that is problematic uh, or doesn't work? Um, uh, it was really easy in number one at dot x, uh, when, when we got to like one five, one six, it's really easy to sit down and look at those things and say, wow, this is really messed up. Um, and, and now, similarly, in the, we're like at 2.8 now, or 2.8's in beta now. Um, it's, it's also easy to see things in 2x that, that we wish that we could move forward on, we could get rid of or, or migrate forward uh, on. Uh, so the first step is like identifying what's wrong. It's identifying and, and figuring out what are the things that cause pain, what are the things that are preventing you from moving forward. Uh, the next step is probably obviously to plan. Um, so I, I like to call this like readme driven development, like essentially uh, figure out what do you, like forget about the baggage of the past and figure out what do you want it to look like? How, what do you actually want the ideal API to be? You know, when we sat down and we looked at like context shifting or uh, template scoping and stuff like that, we, we actually had to figure out what do we actually want it to do and then how do we figure out how to make it work? Obviously, uh, being compatible, being Senver compatible is immensely important for us, uh, but it's also really important that we have a path forward uh, and we know where that forward place is, right? Um, so, uh, so, so the second step is, is to plan and figure that out. Um, so then uh, with, with Ember, especially recently, we've been uh, really trying to push forward the RFC process and communicate, and talk to users, figure out what people's problems are um, and make sure that we're on the same page from the core team perspective of what we think is wrong and what caused people pain uh, and communicate with users, right? So we have RFCs open. I mentioned earlier, we have RFCs open for the module unification stuff, for testing, uh, to, to line testing up with all, all the three different types of testing in one, one uh, mechanism. 
Um, and, and there'll be even more things, like with angle bracket components will come down, and there'll be another RFC for that, hopefully pretty soon. Um, you know, so, uh, so it's really important to communicate uh, with the community, in our case, uh, to figure out, you know, hey, this is what we see as problems. Uh, we're all working in perhaps, uh, we're all sort of feeling the same pain. Um, and, uh, and we're banding together to sort of like figure out where to go and what we can do and what we can make better. Um, you know, so, so this communication is like super important. Um, and, and frankly, like if you look at the threads on some of the RFCs, like you can really see how the conversations from, with the community uh, have directly shaped the direction that we've gone, right? Like um, a whole bunch of different things, like where between modular unification, where we, uh, like we had an initial RFC that we proposed, um, and ultimately, like, people just, like, flipped out, right? It was horrible, uh, essentially. Um, and, uh, and then we did, like, 50 or 60 iterations. Like, there was a gist that we were putting together before we circulated it with a second version of it with, with users. And it was, like, 60 different revisions of that gist, like, where we, like, came up with things to the point where uh, we had uh, considered and discarded so many things that we didn't actually remember why we discarded all of them anymore. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the next thing is, is implement, right? So we have to figure out, so now we know where we're going. Now we have to actually implement it, figure out how to make it happen, uh, and then make it happen, and figure out then how to make it backwards compatible, how to make it work with people's apps today, hopefully ship it uh, outside of Ember as a separate piece from core so that people can actually use it and test it and give feedback on it before uh, we, we bake it in as part of the framework. Uh, similar to what Nathan is, is talking about with the add-on, right? Like, Route Recognizer would be great if you could pull this in. Now, right now, unfortunately, uh, that is slightly trolling uh, because like, you're actually shipping two versions of Route Recognizer to the users, uh, to, like, to your runtime. Because there's no way Ember right now ships as like, one blob, like ember.min.js or whatever. Um, uh, so we need to get better at that, right? That's, that's part of the process, right? Uh, but at least now we can iterate. We can actually have a way uh, for those uh, enterprising souls to uh, actually test these things and figure out uh, how to move forward, how to, how to make it better. Um, and then uh, bring that back for the, the whole group and make everybody uh, have access to the, uh, the, good, the good times, basically. Um, <laughs> and then repeat. Do it over again. Start all over. Uh, realize that all the things you thought were perfect in the new design are also horrible. Uh, and start, start fresh. Um, so, that's fine for the core team. Uh, it's fine for us to do that instead of sit in our little ivory tower and say, hey, this is where Ember is going. This is what we're going to do. Um, the thing that I'm here to tell you is, thank you. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Alex. Uh, the thing I'm here to tell you is that it's actually the same thing you're supposed to do in your apps. Uh, it's exactly the same problem that you have in app development today. It's the same problem that Casey told us about with engines, the same problem that Nathan's talking about with LinkedIn's uh, route recognizer taking a second. It's the same problem that, uh, that, that I'm going to tell you about. It, it, it's literally the same thing. So in your app, you have problems, right? Like there's things in your app that suck. I guarantee you. I promise. Ask somebody. They'll tell you. Uh, there's things that are bad, right? There's things that you should make better or that you could make better, right? Your app, uh, parts of your app, are a framework. They are building blocks for building your app, right? Um, so uh, so it, it's literally the same thing. Like, you need to identify the things in your app that do and don't work and, uh, and, and, and just know, hey, these are pain points. These are problems. We should deal with these. You should make a plan. Uh, it's exactly the same thing. Like, like literally, you should say, hey, uh, using this component is uh, either costly or painful or troublesome uh, or very trolling, right? Like the API of this component, invoking this component, maybe it's a form or a text field or something. Um, it's really, uh, it's horrible, right? So you should make a plan. What do we want to do? Like, sometimes it's fix it. Sometimes it's replace it. Sometimes it's, like, delete it from the code base and never think about it again, right? Uh, but you have to make a plan. You have to figure stuff out. And then you have to use bananas. Uh, and uh, th uh, so then you have to communicate. You have to communicate with your 
project managers. You have to communicate with your coworkers. You have to figure out, um, like, you have to say, hey, this is the plan. This is where I'm going. Uh, this is where I think we need to go. And you have to, like, get buy-in. You have to convince your coworkers uh, or uh, your, your project managers or the stakeholders or whomever you're working for or with uh, that, hey, this is where we want to go. This is important. This is uh, more than just shipping a new feature. If we, if we sh keep shipping features eventually uh, and don't fix these things, eventually you're going to be at the point where you can't ship features anymore, right? Um, so, so this communication is key, right? You've got to get their buy-in. You've got to convince people uh, that you need to be able to move forward. Uh, and then you're going to implement. Uh, usually in app in Appland, I say it's easier. It's actually not easier. Um, it's it's somewhat easier because you actually know exactly the API that's in use. Uh, whereas from a framework perspective, sadly, uh, Ember has a lot of APIs, uh, most of which I wish didn't exist, um, and uh, and we have to support all of them because that's what we are guaranteeing. That's important to for us to say, hey, you can use these things. These, this is Ember, um, but from your app. Like, you may have a specific component, and this component has problems. Um, when you go and redesign a component, you can easily see all the places it's invoked, right? It's not tricky. It's not complicated. You know exactly where it's used, and you can make sure that you replace it, right? So you can, in, you can implement this. Now, the implementation may be uh, fixing it. It may be replacing it. It could be essentially deprecating it. Um, and, uh, and, and, like, one technique, for example, that, I, that I've used here is, like, uh, when you're going to build a new component, build a new one for the next use case, uh, the next usage of, of a given shared component, uh, and then have a test that set errors if you use it more than X times. So that way, um, you just don't get worse, right? Like you can make sure that uh, you are only invoking the component the same number of times, and slowly over time it goes down, and you know that, uh, that it's getting better, right? Um, and you can do the same, uh, same sort of things that we do, we do in Ember. Like you can deprecate, you can have, um, you can have uh, things that, that give compile time warnings. Uh, you can use like ESLint features to do warnings on given method calls, things like that, right? It's the same sort of things that we do uh, in Ember. And then you uh, like the hamster in the background. So I don't think that's a Tomster in the background. I think that's a hamster running on the wheel. Uh, you keep going, like you don't stop. You keep running. Um, there's always things that you're gonna keep doing and, uh, and, and try to make better. So, uh, so basically what I'm telling you is that app development is not that different than framework development, and the problem space is roughly the same. Uh, you just don't know it yet. That's it. <laughs> so I have time for some questions, I think. Bear's gonna grab a microphone. Wait till you get the mic before you ask questions. Hey, Robert, great talk. So let's talk about how we convince our bosses to go through an RFC process or some kind of communication where we get to actually push back on a new feature. Yeah, so there's, there's a few things, right? Like, uh, first of all, um, if you work for someone that literally doesn't care about your input, why are you there, right? That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is uh, you, you basically have to have, you have to have a report. You have to have a way to communicate. Um, Usually, uh, there's, there is a, a process where you can like maybe add things to a backlog or a parking lot or whatever, uh, where you can like flag things, hey, this is messed up, we should deal with this at some point, right? Now, sometimes you'll flag those things and they will literally never come up to work on and they'll never move forward. Um, but other times, uh, you know, mo more often than not, like you, you bring it up, you say, no, this is getting really important. Like, hey, this feature is not tested or um, these things are not testable or uh, you know, things like that, right? So, um, so I can't sit here and tell you how to talk to your boss, uh, but I can tell you that talking to your boss is really important, right? Um, and and uh, you know, the stakeholders, the project managers, whomever it is that is in charge of deciding the future of the product, um, those people generally, if they're actually good at their jobs, generally care what your input is, right? Um, they generally want to make things better because they want to keep iterating, they want to keep adding features. Right? And if they want to keep adding features, they need to make it easier to add the features. So I don't, I think I basically just like walked around your question. Thanks everybody.